This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 161, Three Legendary Creatures. Wei Hua unleashed his Nirvana domain and charged into the tower. He did not even make a move. The Nirvana aura in the Nirvana domain instantly killed the monsters in the tower. However, after he reached the 50th level, half-legendary monsters appeared. The half-legendary creatures had incomplete domains that could resist Wei Hua's Nirvana domain. However, they only resisted for a few seconds. Wei Hua continued charging forward and reached level 57. A legendary monster appeared in the tower. It was a minotaur standing at about 2 meters tall. It had hands, feet, and palms, but its feet were actually hoofs. It also had the tail and head of a bull. Creatures below the legendary level would grow larger as their cultivation level increased. However, legendary level creatures would shrink continuously. There were even some human characteristics that were similar to half-demons. According to legend, it had the ability to change genes. Wei Hua and the Minotaur engaged in a fierce battle. However, the Minotaur was not Wei Hua's match at all. That was because Wei Hua was too proficient in controlling his domain. He had relied on his own understanding and accumulation to break through to this realm. He was much stronger than the creatures who had advanced to the legendary stage through the system. Thirty minutes later, the Minotaur was killed by Wei Hua's punch. The Nirvana aura enveloped the Minotaur and absorbed its life force. However, the moment it died, Wei Hua saw a flash of golden light. Wei Hua immediately understood that it was a golden soul gem. It turned out that the reason the creatures in the instance dungeon did not drop gems was because they had been taken away by the system. After all, the system needed to constantly respawn the monsters in the instance dungeon. Wei Hua arrived at the 58th floor. Two legendary monsters then appeared on the 58th floor. One of them was an ice queen, and the other was a flame overlord. Both of them were humanoid and they started attacking Wei Hua together. Fire and water were incompatible, but in reality, water molecules could be decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen. The temperature at which the hydrogen and oxygen burned was close to 2800 degrees, so it was extremely high. Wei Hua's body could not withstand the high temperature at all. Although he was at the legendary stage and his soul was strong, his body was not strong enough to bear a high temperature of 2800 degrees Celsius. The two monsters worked together to resist Wei Hua. The blue flames burned Wei Hua, causing him to dodge them. At the same time, his Nirvana domain enveloped the two legendary monsters. The aura of Nirvanic extermination turned into a fish that swam toward them. The aura of Nirvanic extermination was as pitch black as a fish, but it only looked like one. Upon closer inspection, one would realize that the fish did not have scales, eyes, or a mouth. It only had a tail and absolutely no fins. However, that did not stop the black fish from running around in the air. In the blink of an eye, the black fish rushed into the two monsters' bodies and attacked their souls like crazy. It dyed their golden soul gem black. Wei Hua's domain was really terrifying, as it could leave traces on the golden soul gem. No, Wei Hua was trying to get the soul gem from the system. Theoretically, it was possible, as Wei Hua was akin to a cheating player now. His domain had been comprehended by him, not given to him by the system. That was why the system could not control him and he could influence the system. However, Wei Hua had underestimated the system. After he spent three hours killing the two monsters, the golden gem disappeared in an instant. It could not be intercepted. I'm still not strong enough. Wei Hua frowned. If his Nirvana aura was stronger or evolved into a destructive aura, he might be able to snatch the soul gem. Wei Hua rushed up to level 59. This time, he encountered three legendary monsters. The domains of the three legendary monsters were extremely powerful. It seemed like each of them was at least at the mid-stage of the legendary realm. That was a little strong. Wei Hua frowned. Although he was a legendary level creature strengthened by three systems, he was at the mid-stage of the legendary level. His domain covered a wide area, and his suppression was obvious. This prevented the Nirvana Chi from approaching him. Although the three legendary monsters were a little strong, 
one could control the air, one could control flames, and the other could control life force. The fire borrowed the wind's momentum, and its destructive power was very strong. Wei Hua could not resist it. As long as he injured one of them, the legendary level monster standing at the back would heal it. Their support, damage output, and healing ability were extremely strong. Unless they were killed instantly, they would not die. Instead, they would die from attrition. Wei Hua could not do anything about the three legendary creatures. He could only rely on external objects. First, the armor he had not used for a long time. Second, the legendary card of the god annihilating beast. Third, system number two. Wei Hua shouted at system number two, find the weakness of the three monsters. System number two was silent for a while before saying, Wei Hua, you're too much. You're a level 40 combat master at the early stage of the legendary stage. You're challenging three level 200 monsters at the middle stage of the legendary stage. It sounded a little too much for one to fight three level 200s at level 40. However, Wei Huo was really strong now. Dao patterns gradually appeared in his domain, which was much stronger than the rigid legendary domains. The god annihilating beast appeared and turned into a second Wei Hua. His domain spread out, but it was only about 10 meters away. Wei Hua put on the assault armor. Although the assault armor could isolate the imposing aura, it was useless against domains. If one encountered a domain level expert who could control metal, the armor would immediately break down. However, the destructive power of the assault armor was really impressive. Wei Hua rushed behind the three legendary level monsters and threw a punch at the wood elemental whose domain pertained to medical treatment. The head of the wood elemental was smashed into pieces. The wood elemental looked like a person. However, its body, hair, and face were green. In the end, its head was smashed by Wei Hua's punch. System number two said, one will not be suppressed in any way when facing a middle stage legendary creature while at the early stage legendary level. They would even suppress the other party. Is this a real domain? Thanks to the Dao patterns, it can counter all domains without Dao patterns. The wood elemental's head gradually grew back. The wood elemental used the rejuvenation skill against him. The tree man was currently meditating in this domain. If he succeeded, he could advance to the domain level. Wei Hua threw another punch. The punch carried the aura of nirvanic extermination, causing half of the wood elemental's body to explode. The fire elemental wanted to rescue him but was blocked by another Wei Hua. It was a god-annihilating beast that had transformed into Wei Hua. It had an attributeless domain, and its weakest domain could resist the fire elemental for at least a few seconds. The wind elemental controlled the wind blade and tried to cut Wei Hua. However, Wei Hua's ability to control the wind was not weaker than his. Wei Hua opened his mouth and blew the wind blade back. The fire elemental roared and charged toward Wei Hua, who had taken the form of a divine beast. However, the god annihilating beast disappeared and dodged the fire elemental. The fire elemental rushed toward Wei Hua's back and threw its gigantic flaming fist at him from behind. Wei Hua grabbed the wood elemental, which was slowly repairing its body, and threw it at the gigantic flaming fist. Boom! The wood elemental was penetrated by the gigantic flaming fist, and its body started burning. The weakness of the wood elemental was fire. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 162, The Human Slaughtering Array The wood elemental was shattered by the fire elemental. The flames continued burning the wood elemental, who roared in pain. However, these were domain-level flames. They carried the power of the domain and could not be extinguished easily. Moreover, the flames were even more powerful. As soon as the wood elemental died, Wei Hua relaxed even more. He did not need to fight the two monsters head-on. He only needed to exhaust them. Wei Hua's domain was very solid. He had a Dao pattern. Although he had been battling the two monsters for over 10 hours, his domain still did not shrink. However, the range of the two monsters' domains had shrunk by two-thirds. They were injured repeatedly, but there was no wood elemental to use the rejuvenation skill on them. 
After a day and 36 hours, Wei Hua finally killed them. Wei Hua at last entered the 60th level and saw five late-stage legendary level elemental monsters, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth elementals. Every single one of them was a level, 230 monster. Wei Hua retreated without another word. He was not that powerful after defeating five legendary level late-stage monsters. The Nagas let out a sigh of relief when they saw Wei Hua leave the steeple. Their hearts had been in their throats when they'd seen Wei Hua reach the 60th floor. They had been afraid that Wei Hua would succeed and sweep the tower away. In the end, Wei Hua only stayed on the 60th floor for a few seconds before exiting. The reward for the 59th floor was soon settled. Wei Hua was given a legendary soul gem and seven level beads. These level beads were not simple. This was explained in the introduction. Plus one level with each usage below level 100. If this item was sold at an auction, it would cause a huge uproar. The auction hall had been built by the players. On the day of the opening, they had used the continent's megaphone to shout for three hours. This place was called Treasure Pavilion. Almost every player in the Dragon Soaring Continent knew about this auction. The main reason was that it had been very strongly advertised. The loudspeaker had kept shouting for three hours, diverting the player's attention. In the end, they had been killed by the monsters. This had made some players hate this auction. Wei Hua looked at the seven level beads and mumbled to himself, I might reach level 100 in a few months. System number two poured cold water on him. You're overthinking it. Because it's your first time rushing into the tower, you were rewarded with something good. From the second time onward, obtaining a level bead will be good enough. Don't even think about legendary gems. Wei Hua was not dejected. He looked at the steeple seriously and said, this is a great opportunity to temper my domain. Just based on the battle that occurred now, there are many places worth remembering. I want to stay here and focus on my cultivation to become stronger. Almost all living beings had the desire to become stronger. Everyone wanted to become stronger because strength would allow them to easily obtain everything they wanted. Wei Hua planned to stay there for a long time and go to the tower every month. However, at that moment, the Naga's great ancestor suddenly shouted, Human Slaughtering Array, open. Soon, Wei Hua heard a long dragon's roar. A five-colored divine light appeared around him, and the Naga surrounding the steeple retreated immediately. Small flags were stuck in the ground around the steeple 10 meters apart from each other. The flag started glowing red, and a huge red circle surrounded the city. Wei Huo was in the center. The red circle was very conspicuous on the dim ground. This was a human slaughtering array that had been set up by the Naga when Wei Huo had charged into the tower. They had been waiting for Wei Huo to come out. Survival was the most basic need of a civilization. Wei Hua was a legendary level creature and belonged to the same kind as the peerless savage. No Naga would be able to stop him if he attacked. To avoid being attacked passively, the Naga had thought that they might as well take the initiative to attack. Besides, they did not want Wei Hua to successfully charge into the tower and leave with the pagoda. That was why they had set up an array formation and waited for Wei Hua to come out. They would kill or suppress Wei Hua with the help of the array formation to ensure the safety of the Naga. It was better to become cruel than to beg the enemy for mercy. Wei Hua left the pagoda and stood in the air. He looked at the circle around him and knew that it was a formation specially set up to deal with him. He had learned the luck severance skill before and knew that most arrays were circular. However, Wei Hua did not know how powerful the human slaughtering array was. Still, he did not panic at all. He knew very well that this was his personal calamity. As a legendary creature, he could suppress his luck. Once his luck grew stronger, there would naturally be a calamity. As long as he could survive it, he would obtain huge benefits. Lightning surrounded Wei Hua's body. He lifted his head and looked at the sky. A moment later, lightning flashed and the sound of thunder came from the sky. He leaped up and charged toward the great ancestor, who was controlling the array. At the same moment that Wei Hua leaped out, the great ancestor and 72 Nagas chanted mysterious incantations. The incantations were deep, as if they were whispering evil words from the abyss. 
The red circle emitted a dazzling red light. This red light shot toward Wei Hua like a red laser. Wei Hua sensed the scorching aura of the red light and dodged it. However, the red laser hit the barrier on the other side and split into two laser beams. One of the laser beams hit another barrier, while the other shot toward Wei Hua. Their power did not decrease at all. Wei Hua frowned. He had already understood the human slaughtering array's methods. When a laser beam shot out, he dodged it. In the end, the entire array was filled with laser beams. The enemy could not avoid them. They could either be shot to death or die of exhaustion. What a powerful array. Wei Hua leaped and threw something with his hand. It was a bronze mirror. The mirror intercepted a laser beam, but another laser beam hit him. A small hole was pierced through his arm and blood flowed out. The great ancestor flew into the sky and took out a small bronze cauldron. He threw it out and it landed on Wei Hua's head. As it descended, it grew larger and expanded more than ten times. The small bronze cauldron became even larger and landed on Wei Hua's shoulder. The cauldron was extremely heavy. It was hundreds of times heavier than the bronze cauldron Wei Hua had previously obtained. Besides, this cauldron had a suctioning force that made it difficult for Wei Hua to escape. The great ancestor shouted, Human Slaughtering Array, activate. Nine red laser beams were fired from the barrier in the Human Slaughtering Array. The nine red laser beams did not hit Wei Hua directly. Instead, they hit the barrier and split into 18 beams. Then, they split into 36 beams. In the end, they split into 72 laser beams and aimed at Wei Hua. His head, limbs, heart, and throat were all targeted by the laser beams. This was indeed a human slaughtering array. It wanted to kill Wei Hua. Wei Hua picked up the cauldron and smiled coldly. You guys really think I'm a beast? This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 163, Survival is the Most Basic Need. 72 laser beams shot toward Wei Hua. The great ancestor stood in the sky above the formation and controlled the bronze cauldron with all his might. He obviously possessed a mystical technique. Green runes appeared on the bronze cauldron. They were so powerful that they could suppress Wei Hua. However, Wei Hua roared and unleashed his domain, making it cover the entire array. The cauldron swayed and cut off the connection with the great ancestor's divine sense. Wei Hua hid in the cauldron and used it to block the 72 laser beams. The 72 laser beams hit the cauldron and produced a deafening sound. If one's luck was too strong, there would be a calamity. Wei Hua had just obtained a large amount of luck and killed his way through the tower. Due to his strong luck, he had obtained a good reward. He was also a domain realm expert who could suppress luck. That was why he had encountered the formation set up by the Naga the moment he had exited the pagoda. The same applied to the Naga. Over the past 200 years, they had been reproducing, and their luck had been getting stronger. More and more members of the Naga race had appeared, and powerful beings had emerged. However, they had encountered Wei Hua at that moment. According to a principle, the weak necessarily grew strong and the strong necessarily became weak at their peak. The same applied to humans, nations, species, and civilizations. When two colossi with powerful luck collided, only one side survived. Wei Hua's luck was comparable to the Naga race's luck. Even with the luck severance skill, this was still shocking. Wei Hua had probably walked for too long. A human's journey was comparable to the rise and fall of a race. After the 72 laser beams were done, the Naga were exhausted. This was not an array that ordinary Naga could control. The array that the great ancestor had created was a self-inflicting array. That was because they only had one enemy and there was a large number of Naga. Even if they injured 1000 enemies, they would lose 800 Naga. However, they had a lot of Naga, so they could switch things up. Upon seeing that the leader was exhausted, he shouted, next round. 72 new Naga stepped forward and assumed their positions. Then, the barrier lit up with a red light again. The next round of array attacks was about to be activated. However, at that moment, Wei Hua had already picked up the bronze cauldron and thrown it at the barrier. 
The bronze cauldron was very heavy, and Wei Hua had injected his domain force into it. It was extraordinarily powerful, so he might be able to break through the formation. The Naga's great ancestor sneered. The corner of the array shall open and let the bronze cauldron return. The cauldron flew forward rapidly, but the barrier suddenly opened at the corner. The cauldron flew out and smashed into the ground, creating a huge pit. The ground and the stones on it were smashed into pieces. The surrounding Naga were sucked dry by the domain's power and turned into black gas. The Naga did not notice the black gas. The Naga's great ancestor descended from the sky to retrieve the bronze cauldron. However, the cauldron flipped and countless black gas spewed out. This was the aura of nirvanic extermination. It was extremely terrifying and capable of destroying one's body and spirit. The great ancestor was shocked when he saw the black chi. He then roared, retreat. Unfortunately, it was too late. The aura of nirvanic extermination erupted like a piranha in the river. As soon as it entered the river, it immediately scattered in all directions to find its prey. The moment it found it, it would swarm over and devour it completely. The great ancestor flew into the sky, but several nirvana chi were still chasing after him. The naga on the ground were not so lucky. Nirvana chi were chasing them as well, and the person in charge was the first to bear the brunt of the attack. The Naga's flesh and blood immediately rotted as their souls were devoured by the Nirvana Chi. The flag bearers died one after another, and the human slaughtering array started shaking and becoming unstable. Wei Hua kept punching the barrier with his fists until half of the flag bearers died. That was when cracks appeared on the barrier. Wei Hua used his domain force and threw a punch. A terrifying force penetrated the barrier. A Naga's scalp went numb when he saw this scene. He then shouted, the savage has broken through the array. He's going to slaughter our race. Let's escape. Wei Hua ignored the other Naga and charged toward the great ancestor. He wanted to kill the great ancestor and obtain his half gold, half purple soul gem. He wanted to absorb the gem and obtain the great ancestor's memories. He wanted to find out what had happened to the peerless savage 200 years ago. Wei Hua had originally not planned to do that. He had planned to complete quests in the crowd of Naga after he left the pagoda. He wanted to improve his favorability, trade, and obtain scarce resources. However, since the Naga had set up an array to kill him, Wei Huo would not hold back either. He even suspected that the Naga had been exterminated 200 years ago after provoking that peerless savage. The great ancestor shouted, this savage wants to exterminate our species. Run. Each Naga is out for themselves. Wei Hua snorted. You guys were the ones who attacked first. The aura of nirvanic extermination surged. In just a few seconds, dozens of Naga were destroyed both in body and soul. What was even more terrifying was that a single aura of nirvanic extermination would grow into two after killing one Naga. Then, it would attack other Naga. It was extremely terrifying. The great ancestor was terrified when he saw this scene. What is this? Is it the true strength of a legendary creature? Wei Hua extended his hand and grabbed the great ancestor's neck. His other hand covered his head. Die. Without the array, the great ancestor could not resist at all. Besides, he was old and weak. He could not withstand Wei Hua's palm. The great ancestor felt boundless regret as he faced his death. Why would I provoke such a vicious person? Wei Hua slapped the Naga's head. The aura of nirvanic extermination rushed into the Naga's skull and destroyed his body. His soul was also destroyed, leaving only a half-gold, half-purple soul gem behind. The Naga started crying when they saw the great ancestor being killed. The great ancestor was like a god in their hearts. Without him, the Naga race would not have existed today. However, more Naga started fleeing in all directions. They knew that there was no need to worry about survival. Some of them started insulting the Great Ancestor. The Great Ancestor is old and dim-witted. He listened to the slandering words of a few elders. That's a legendary level creature. How could we provoke it? Isn't it really naive of us to try and kill someone who has never done anything? 
Fortunately, we ran away quickly. Apart from the escapees, some of the Naga knelt on the ground and begged Weihua. Don't kill us, murderous god. We can do anything for you. We only want to survive. Many Naga started cursing these greedy Naga. Damn those Naga. They are willing to give up their dignity to survive. Let's kill them first. The surrendered Naga were elated when they saw the aura of Nirvanic extermination bypassing them. However, they were furious when they saw the other Naga charging toward them. We are saving the strength of the Naga. This is a world where the strong are respected. By relying on the strong, we can survive more effectively. Compared to survival, nothing is worth mentioning. The great ancestor had been killed, and the Naga had been divided. Three kinds of Naga had emerged, escapees, resistors, and surrenderers. Wei Hua ignored this and focused on absorbing the half-gold, half-purple soul gem. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 164, Advice Wei Hua had reached the domain level. There was no need for him to absorb the soul gem. He could crush the soul gem and search for the memories he wanted. Soon, Wei Hua obtained the method and control of the human slaughtering array. The human slaughtering array was powerful. It was said that it could trap and kill an epic ranked expert if it was controlled by 72 rare ranked experts. If 72 epic ranked experts were controlling it, they could kill a legendary ranked expert. Unfortunately, epic ranked creatures were not that easy to come by. The Naga did not even have 11 epic ranked creatures. One of their strongest members had been killed by Wei Hua's slap. Wei Hua could use this array because his divine sense was powerful enough to control 72 pieces. It could trap a legendary creature but not kill it. Legendary creatures were not easy to kill. The great ancestor had yet to become a true legendary level being. He did not understand the secrets of the legendary level. The lifespan of a legendary level body was unlimited because a legendary level being could control molecular atoms and allow their body to be revived forever. Just by relying on laser attacks, he could only trap legendary level beings at most, but he could not kill them. The small hole on Wei Hua's arm did not bleed. It recovered in about 10 seconds. Apart from setting up and controlling the human slaughtering array, Wei Hua also obtained a cultivation technique. It was a cultivation technique created by the great ancestor for the Naga. It was very impressive that the Naga had cultivated to the epic stage. Wei Hua accepted the technique with a smile. He could modify it for humans. Then, Wei Hua obtained the controlling method of the bronze cauldron. The bronze cauldron could shrink in size like a magical weapon. It could also be controlled with the divine thought to suppress enemies. In the end, Wei Hua finally obtained the memories of the peerless savage. She was a woman wrapped in light, so he could not see her face clearly. She was holding a magic longbow in her hand and could shoot seven different arrows of different colors. Each arrow had different attack effects. Wei Hua flipped through the memories carefully. The great ancestor had been young back then, so he had not seen much. He only knew that the savage had appeared and fought with the tribe's elders. She was an epic-ranked creature, but she had used her magic longbow to shoot three epic-ranked Naga. A flaming arrow had broken through the air and burned the Naga city. The more Wei Hua looked at the figure, the more familiar he found it. His intuition told him that this person might be Lu Chi Chi. As the time halt had not yet ended, it was impossible for other humans to exist 200 years ago unless they were artificial intelligence. She had obtained some magical heritage in the West Continent and extended her lifespan. Because she had a soul, she had broken through to the epic stage. However, this was just a guess. Perhaps it was not Lu Chi Chi but someone else. Wei Hua asked system number 2, do you remember this person? Wei Hua had previously asked system number 2 about Lu Chi Chi's situation. However, after system number 2's investigation, it only answered with a few words. No one has found this person. Both artificial intelligence and humans had been unable to find any information about Lu Chi Chi. There were many people named Lu Chi Chi, but none of them was the Lu Chi Chi Wei Hua knew. Wei Hua suddenly thought of the note. The content of the note might have a deeper meaning, but Wei Hua did not understand it. 
The note was probably a hint left behind by Lu Chichi to tell him that they would meet in the northern continent in the 300th century. Wei Hua had found his neighborhood, but Lu Chichi had gotten lost and accidentally destroyed a city of the Naga. Wei Hua was confused. Had she not used navigation? However, it would be unreasonable if the system did not have Lu Chichi's information. After all, Lu Chichi had been an artificial being in the beginning. The information must have been recorded, unless a mighty figure had deleted the data. After he destroyed the great ancestor, Wei Hua's luck soared. He searched through the crowd of Naga and found over 70 kilograms of mithril. He also found all sorts of bronze weapons. There were even bronze minerals in a cave. This was the advantage of luck. Wei Hua did not kill all the Naga. He did not kill anyone who surrendered, as he wanted to use them to mine. Besides, Wei Huo was still there. He would not leave immediately, as he had yet to break through the tower. He eliminated all the rebels who were still in the crowd of Naga. He then chose the strongest Naga out of the surrendered parties and asked him to lead the Naga and order them to mine. Wei Hua did not care about anything else except for the Naga. The surrenderers realized that Wei Hua was no different from the Great Ancestor. The Great Ancestor had only cultivated in seclusion all day and had not cared about the internal affairs of the Naga. However, the surviving rebels and escapees did not recognize Wei Hua as their leader. The escapees kept running away. They wanted to stay away and try to destroy Wei Hua's plan. The surrenderers' previous lives did not change much. Wei Hua could not be bothered to pay attention to them. He planned to stay in the crowd of Naga to cultivate and improve his strength. He also wanted to find the old monk and practice the Taiji Fist. His intuition told him that the Taiji Fist was not ordinary. However, the old monk had practiced the 24th simplified Taiji Fist that was used to nourish one's life. This was not an orthodox heritage. The old monk's temple was less than 70 kilometers away. To Wei Hua, this was like going out to buy cigarettes. When he reached the small mountain, the temperature was still cool. The forest was on fire outside, but this place was still safe. When he arrived at the top of the mountain, the old monk was meditating. He had no thoughts on his mind, and he was completely silent. However, as soon as Wei Hua appeared, the air started vibrating. He immediately opened his eyes. Benefactor Wei, we meet again. You're here for the Dragon Lock Well, aren't you? The old monk said. The Dragon Lock Well is a really unlucky place. Please don't go in. More than ten years ago, a mischievous child accidentally entered it. He came out with immense strength and the ability to swim freely in the water. Wei Huo was speechless. Are you using this story to persuade me? Wei Huo said, no, I'm here to learn the Taiji Fist. The old monk shook his head. I understand. Learning the Taiji Fist is just an excuse. Your real goal is the Dragon Lock Well. You really can't barge in there. A few years ago, an old man with cancer wanted to go in and take a look. He said that he was about to die. That was his last wish. This penniless monk was soft-hearted enough to let him in. When he came out, not only did the cancer go away, but he lived for ten more years. Wei Huo was speechless. Are you really trying to persuade me not to take on the challenge of the Dragon Lock Well? What kind of place is this? It's obviously an auspicious place, isn't it? Wei Hua said earnestly, Master, I'm really here to learn the Taiji Fist. The old monk sighed. Forget it. Given your strength, I can't stop you. I'll take you to the Dragon Lock Well. However, according to the rumors, anyone who enters the Dragon Lock Well will encounter misfortune in their old years. Their blood will turn blue, and they will not be able to hold their breath when they die. They will only leave after struggling for three to four days. It's very painful. Wei Hua pulled the old monk back. Master, I'm really here to learn the Taiji Fist. I don't want to go to the Dragon Lock Well. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 165, We're All Wooden People. Wei Hua had already asked System Number 2 about it. System number two did not know what was in the dragon lock well. There might be a true dragon locked in it. 
System number two had said that if there was a true dragon, Wei Huo would not be able to handle it with his current strength. The true dragon's strength was terrifying. It was much more terrifying than the winged lizards of the west. The dragon she had spat out could make an empire rise or fall. System number two even made a bold prediction. If it's a true dragon, it's definitely an existence stronger than a mythical creature. In that case, the chains won't be able to lock the true dragon. The dragon lock well might only be locked by dragon chi. Wei Hua pulled the old monk back and repeatedly told him that he was really there to learn the Taiji fist. The old monk tried to persuade him again. The dragon lock well is very dangerous. It's best if you don't step into it casually. A young reporter with a camera barged in and became chief editor when he returned. Wei Huo was speechless. Master, you have no intention of stopping me. System number two said, these people might have obtained a wisp of dragon chi and the power of wind and water. Their lives and fates are irreversible. Luck and water can change a person's future. Wei Hua looked at the tree by the temple and thought of dragons. He suddenly felt that the tree trunk was like a dragon's body, the tree top was like a dragon's head, the leaves were like dragon scales, the branches were like dragon horns, and the fruits were like dragon eyes. This was not a Bodhi tree. It was a dragon head tree that had mutated due to the dragon chi. The tree in the center of the temple was a dragon head tree. It was a tree that had grown there because of the dragon chi. No wonder the fruit produced by the tree was extraordinary. After Wei Hua's multiple explanations, the old monk finally stopped trying to persuade him. Wei Hua had wanted to learn the Taiji fist, but the old monk was practicing the form fist today. He first stood on a round pile and, without saying a word, he put on the trisolar form and threw a half-step collapsing punch. Wei Hua was confused. Why did you change your fist technique? Wei Hua asked, Master, why are you practicing the form fist? The old monk said, not long after I came to this mountain, the government asked us to promote martial arts. They wanted us to strengthen our bodies and protect ourselves. Someone even came up the mountain to teach me. That's why I learned it. Wei Huo was speechless. You're not studying martial arts at the Shaolin Monastery, but you're quite good at learning martial arts from other sects. Wei Huo followed the old monk's example and practiced for a while. Soon, he acquired another skill called Form Fist, Basic. The old monk continued punching and meditating. At that moment, Wei Hua told System Number 2, I heard you say that there is another inheritance in this mountain apart from the instance dungeon. System Number 2 replied, That's right. There's a heritage in the mountain. It's in the middle of the temple hall. One has to knock open the seventh and eighth row of stone slabs. There's a secret passage that leads to the middle of the mountain. There's a cave in the middle of the mountain, and a heritage is hidden there. Wei Hua arrived at the palace and opened the stone tablet. Indeed, he saw a dark cave. He leaped down the cave and landed on wet ground. That was the fifth cave that Wei Hua had encountered. According to tradition, there should be a small game in each cave. Based on the scores of small games, the completion rate of the heritage was different. Wei Huo was ready to play a game. However, after a few steps, he arrived in front of a stone wall. The stone wall emitted a chilling vibe. Wei Huo walked forward and touched the stone wall. It was smooth and cold. However, there were no images on the stone wall. Wei Huo took out system number two and asked, how can I enter? There was no reaction from system number two. The screen was pitch black, and there was no image. It was like a phone that had been turned off. Soon, the screen of system number two emitted a blue light. This blue light shone out and turned the stone wall blue. Why was the screen blue? Wei Hua frowned. He suddenly felt a chill penetrate his body and attack the golden core in him. However, when the golden core turned cold, that coolness instantly shattered. Wei Hua realized that the blue light could freeze souls. System number two had said that he did not have a CPU, but he had a soul. Unfortunately, his soul was not strong. He could not resist the low temperature, which could freeze his soul. In the end, he was frozen. 
Wei Huo looked at the stone wall and wrapped his domain force around his fist. He threw a punch and the terrifying fist smashed into the stone wall. The terrifying force cracked the stone wall instantly. Wei Huo finally saw what was behind the stone wall. It was an extremely huge blue ice crystal. The ice crystal kept emitting a blue light. This blue light did not lower the temperature of the surrounding air, but it could freeze souls. Epic-ranked creatures would be affected, and rare-ranked beings would be slowed down by two-thirds. Only Wei Hua, who had reached the legendary rank, was not afraid of the blue light. Wei Hua shattered the stone wall and walked forward. However, the huge ice crystal suddenly emitted a childish voice. We're all wooden people. Don't speak or move. As soon as he finished his sentence, Wei Hua frowned slightly. A blue light shot toward him. It was a blue light that could freeze souls. However, Wei Hua lifted his hand and unleashed his domain to block the blue light. This was the small game. This time, it was a game of, we're all wooden, one, people. A childish voice came from the ice crystal again. We're all wooden people. Wei Hua walked forward, but the ice crystal immediately shouted, don't move. Wei Hua did not stop in his tracks. He continued moving forward. An even stronger blue light attacked with the power of an imposing aura. It was enough to freeze the soul of a rare-ranked expert. However, Wei Huo was fearless. With a slap, he made the blue light disappear. The ice crystal spoke faster. Don't move. It skipped the first sentence and shouted, don't move. Regardless of whether one was a wooden person or not, no one was allowed to move. A chill that could freeze an epic-ranked expert's soul attacked. The blue light attacked from all directions with the power of a domain. It could freeze all souls below the legendary level. Wei Hua's domain spread out and blocked the blue light. He strode forward, not giving the ice crystal any chance to speak. At that moment, rule power flowed on the ice crystal. Wei Hua felt it and stopped in his tracks. This time, the ice crystal did not say a word. The blue light carrying the rule power spread out. However, the blue light did not attack Wei Hua this time because he did not move. This was a game called, We're All Wooden People. As long as he did not move, nothing would happen. At that moment, Wei Hua was only one meter away from the ice crystal. However, countless rule power surrounded him. As long as Wei Hua moved, the low temperature of the rule power would freeze his soul. 1. A game where a person counts as others sneak up on him. When the counter turns around, everyone else has to freeze and act like wooden people. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 166, Mystic Yin Ice Soul Skill. Wei Hua could not move now. Otherwise, the blue light that carried the rule power would freeze his soul instantly. The blue light was like a wooden wall and a bomb in the ruins of the Naga. It was like a game console in a heritage cave, just like the gem in the underwater dragon palace cave. It carried rule power. An existence below the mythical stage could not destroy it no matter what. Similarly, one could not resist these attacks. The ice crystal seemed to be targeting Wei Hua. The blue light that carried the rule power kept spreading. It would freeze Wei Hua instantly when he moved. Many people had played games like, We're All Wooden People, when they were young. This game not only tested one's reaction speed and observation skills, but it also tested one's ability to be honest as a child. When one was young, one could do nothing about children who just played unfairly if they insisted that they had not moved. However, if one dared to move, one would never be able to move again. Although Wei Huo was not frozen, he was trapped there. He could neither advance nor retreat. Even though he could not move, this did not stop him from opening the inventory. If he released one or two creatures to attract attention, he might have a chance to complete the game and obtain the inheritance. In his divine pet space were Wei Sha, the rhinoceros, the purple cat, and the gold eater. He could release them instantly without making any movements. As long as one of them was sacrificed, he could attract attention. Wei Hua checked system number two's condition. System number two's soul was intact, but it was frozen. 
Wei Hua also observed the blue light seeping into system number two's soul and strengthening it. Although the blue light could freeze souls, it could also strengthen them. Wei Hua thought about it and decided to let Wei Sha out. Although Wei Sha's combat power was strong, she was still at the normal level. This was a rare opportunity for her to break through to the rare rank. With a thought, Wei Hua let Wei Sha out. The moment Wei Sha appeared, she froze, and her body entered another state. Low temperature and stillness freeze the soul. The soul's lifespan will not decrease. The soul will become stronger after being unfrozen. Note, this is useless against beings above the mythical stage. Stagnation time, 3 years, 56 days. At that moment, the rule power disappeared. Then, the ice crystal started speaking. We are all. Before it could finish this sentence, Wei Hua took a step forward and slapped the ice crystal. However, he only heard a crack as the ice crystal shattered. At that moment, Wei Hua let out a sigh of relief. The game, We're All Wooden People, had finally ended. He had not expected it to involve so many dangers. However, after discovering the way to get through, it was easy to overcome them. After the ice crystal shattered, an ancient scroll appeared. The words, Mystic In Ice Soul Skill, were on it. Wei Hua did not study it directly. Instead, he imitated a human and blocked the player's information. Then, he was able to open the ancient scroll. This ancient scroll was not bad. Just like many Xianxia novels, it looked like a very old formulation on the surface, but it had already segmented the sentences, added punctuation marks, and used simplified Chinese. It was guaranteed that a modern person could understand it. After all, this kind of cultivation technique was meant for a 17-year-old or 18-year-old male protagonist. These young men had yet to study the ancient Chinese language in Country Z. They could not understand the language or any sentences without punctuation marks, let alone some complicated words. They would not understand a cultivation technique that had been passed down for thousands of years under the circumstances. One would have to translate it for them. This was especially true for modern people who had transmigrated to the world of martial arts. If they accidentally found the Nine Sun Divine skill under a cliff, wouldn't it be awkward if they didn't understand it because their literary skills were not solid? Wei Hua studied the Mystic In Ice Soul skill for a while and realized that it was not simple. It could freeze one's soul if one practiced it to a high level and it was compatible with Wei Hua's Nirvana domain. Wei Hua had the Dragon Flame Control skill, but this skill might be better for a passionate person. That way, one could unleash the power of the skill. However, Wei Hua was a calm person. It was not easy for him to get angry or hot-blooded. That was why this cultivation technique was more suitable for him. After all, his heart had already turned cold. Wei Hua left after obtaining this cultivation technique. He put Wei Sha and system number two away. Their souls would not wake up anytime soon after being frozen. However, once they woke up, their strength would definitely improve. The Mystic In Ice Soul skill was very powerful. At its peak, it could freeze one's soul. That way, even if a creature's soul did not have a long lifespan, they could use this skill to freeze it, thus surviving for countless years in the future. Wei Hua walked out of the hall and saw the old monk practicing his fist move. This time, the old monk's fist move was weird. His hands were spinning like a windmill. This was the back through fist. It could increase the power of his fist or palm with centrifugal force. There was a common name for this fist technique among people. It was called the tortoise fist or grand windmill fist. The two fists kept spinning and attacking the enemy crazily. As the fists were endless, the enemy could not resist them. Wei Hua could not help but ask, Master, how many fist techniques do you know? There was one more thing he did not ask. Why did you choose to practice other sex fist techniques instead of the Shaolin Monastery's techniques? The old monk smiled when he saw Wei Hua. This was taught to me by an old Taoist who passed by this place a long time ago. He said that this technique can cure blood clots and improve blood circulation. Wei Hua was speechless. Are you the protagonist? Everyone seems to want to teach you a fist technique. Wei Hua practiced with the old monk for a while. 
A new skill, called Back Through Fist, incomplete, appeared on his skill menu. Wei Hua's intuition told him that if he kept learning fist moves from the old monk, he might learn moves that the Shaolin Monastery did not know. When he saw Wei Hua come out of the hall, the old monk said, this temple actually contains an ominous item. Legend has it that a young woodcutter went up the mountain to cut wood but accidentally entered a cave under the temple. He only thought that it had been a while, but by the time he left this place and returned to the foot of the mountain, decades had passed. His companions were all dead. Wei Huo was speechless. A monk could not make up stories. This story was clearly about a lumberjack watching two children play chess. A few decades had passed by the time the game had ended. The old monk said, monks never lie. It said that decades ago, a person in an ancient costume walked out of this temple. He was saying a lot of words, but no one could understand what he was saying. He was taken away by the relevant department. The expert said that this person had entered a space-time tunnel and transmigrated from ancient times to modern times. Wei Hua pursed his lips. Master, I think you should really go down the mountain. Actually, 500 years have passed. The old monk smiled. Monks never lie. However, you shouldn't lie to a monk either. If 500 years had passed, the person standing in front of you would only have been a skeleton. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 167, Locking Chain. The old monk practiced his fist move for a while before running into the kitchen and saying loudly, Benefactor Way, you're in luck today. I found something good in the back of the mountain. Wei Hua followed him into the kitchen and saw some white fungi. They were all rare. Wei Hua warned him, be careful not to eat them. After hundreds of years, the mushrooms must have evolved. They could not be eaten casually. The old monk smiled. I've been on this mountain for decades. How could I not recognize poisonous mushrooms? These are lotus immortal mushrooms. They have medicinal value. I saw a few of them at the back of the mountain and picked them. I didn't expect you to come here today for a visit. This is fate. God wants you to stay. Wei Hua smiled. What a coincidence. I brought something good too. Wei Hua took out a few purple plants. They looked like cabbages, only they were purple. A long stem extended from the center, and a small purple fruit was hanging from the stem. This was the main food of the Naga. It grew under the ground and it emitted purple light in that dark environment. The old monk started washing vegetables. At that moment, Wei Hua realized that the old monk had a tattoo on his arm. Apart from the tattoo, there were also many scars on his arm. Wei Hua asked, Master, are you really not planning to leave the mountain? The outside world has changed. It's no longer the world you knew. The old monk shook his head. Nothing outside has anything to do with me. I just want to die here. I've already dug my own grave. Before I die, I will crawl into my grave and let the passage of time cover my corpse. Wei Hua frowned slightly. Master, I think you're not an ordinary person. I wonder what you were doing before you came up the mountain. The old monk's eyes focused. A trace of fierceness appeared in his gentle, benevolent eyes, but a moment later, they returned to normal. Amitba. I have already escaped into emptiness. The things that happened before I went up the mountain have nothing to do with me. Now, I'm just an ordinary old monk. Wei Hua did not ask any other questions. However, he knew that this old monk, who knew all sorts of martial arts, was definitely not an ordinary person. Since ancient times, Buddhism had been a quiet place one sought for shelter. Many extraordinary people chose to hide themselves and their lives after failing. The simpler a temple was, the more terrifying the person in it was. For example, many tourists visited extremely lively temples. Most of the monks there were staff members and not real monks. They did not chant and only abided by the rules to earn money. Of course, there were still some accomplished monks who lived in seclusion and did not care about the world. After all, they were too lazy to interact with ordinary people. After dinner, Wei Hua said, Master, I want to go to the Dragon Lock Well. You better find a place to hide. 
The old monk sighed. I knew you were here for the dragon lock well. I know you're powerful, but you have to be careful. A few foreign explorers came to the dragon lock well to explore it and never came out. Wei Huo was speechless. There might be a real dragon in the well. If the Chinese entered it, they would be rewarded, but all foreigners would be eaten. Wei Hua arrived outside the steeple. According to the old monk's advice, he could jump through a broken window on the third floor if he could not open the door. Wei Hua walked around the steeple and saw a broken window on the third floor. He jumped through it. The steeple had nine floors. It was a nine-story pagoda built to suppress demonic dragons. Wei Hua arrived on the bottom floor of the steeple and saw the dragon lock well. The chain of the dragon lock well was thick and huge. It was tied to a huge rock. Wei Hua walked over and saw the words, Dragon Lock Well, written on the huge rock. The other end of the chain extended to the bottom of the well. The well's mouth emitted a blue light that illuminated the interior of the temple. Wei Hua grabbed the chain and started pulling it out. The water in the well started shaking, and the blue light in the temple began flickering. Wei Hua kept pulling the chain, and the temple's light started drifting. The atmosphere became weird. Wei Hua continued pulling on the chain. Soon, water droplets fell from his hand. The water-drenched chain was as bone-chillingly cold as if it could freeze souls. The chain creaked and the well water kept moving. Soon, a weird sound came from the bottom of the well. It was like the sound of a bull. It was so deep that it caused the ground to shake and the stones to beat. Wei Hua pulled the chain out to see what was inside the well. It was said that in the Dragon Lock Well was the source of the Spring Eye, an outlet into the sea. If pulled, it would trigger a super flood. There were Dragon Lock Wells all over the country, but no one had ever heard of anyone pulling out all the chains in the Dragon Lock Wells. No expert had investigated this, and no one had used sound waves or placed two devices inside a well to check the situation. Gulp. Gulp. The sound of bubbles could be heard from the bottom of the well. The well seemed to be boiling, and air bubbles were popping up continuously. The well water was rising as Wei Hua piled the chain into a small mountain. He pulled the chain to the third floor of the temple and threw it out of the broken window before continuing. The chain became heavier. If Wei Hua was not powerful, he would have had to find hundreds of people to pull the chain. Splash! The sound of chains rubbing against each other was heard. Well water gushed out of the well's mouth and flowed through the crack outside of the steeple. Wei Huo was still pulling the chain out. He had to figure out what was in the dragon lock well. Was there really a true dragon? Boom! A terrifying sound came from the well, as if something was rolling over. Wei Huo felt the chain in his hand sink and almost pull him back. He was confused. What was that chain? The well water kept surging out and flowing out of the steeple and down the mountain. At that moment, the temperature outside the mountain was still high. It was at least 70 degrees. The moment the well water flowed out, the ground immediately produced sizzling sounds. The well water began to nourish the charred ground. A few animals who had been lucky enough to survive in the cave plunged into the water and swam freely. The amount of water flowing out of the dragon lock well kept increasing. The first floor of the steeple was filled with water, and well water kept pouring out of the gaps between the doors and windows on the first floor. A few waterfalls were formed on the mountain, and water gushed out as if it wanted to drown the land. Wei Huo was still pulling the chain. Meanwhile, the chain was getting heavier. At that moment, dark clouds started to gather in the sky. It seemed like it was going to rain. Wei Huo was confused. Could the dragon lock well really be a sea pass? Once the chain was pulled out, would it cause a flood? The dry ground was gradually moistened. The heat wave was not over yet, but the temperature of the world was dropping. Cold well water kept surging out, lowering the surrounding temperature. Wei Hua continued pulling the chain, but a sudden force was coming from it. If Wei Hua had not used his domain force, he would have been dragged into the dragon lock well by this force. Wei Hua's eyes narrowed as he pulled. Soon, a clunking sound came from the dragon lock well. 
This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 168, Dragon Suppressing Divine Nail Wei Hua tugged at the chain and realized that it could not be pulled. It was as if there was a giant creature at the end of the chain. Wei Hua did not use his full strength. If that happened, the chain might break. It's time to go down. Wei Hua mumbled to himself. If he forcibly tugged the chain, it might destroy the dragon lock well. It would be better for him to go down the well. The world outside the mountain had long dried up to the extreme, almost turning into a desert. Perhaps it was not a bad thing to be watered by a well that kept appearing. Wei Hua looked out the window. At that moment, the sky was already covered by dark clouds. Lightning flashed and thunder roared. It seemed like heavy rain was about to fall. Wei Huo was curious. Was there really a demonic dragon in the dragon lock well? Was he going to stir up trouble by letting it out? Wei Huo walked toward the dragon lock well. The water in the well had already engulfed him. He did not feel any discomfort after entering the water. He could already breathe underwater. Wei Huo pulled the chain and swam into the well's mouth. The well water kept surging out, but Wei Huo was holding the chain. The weight of the chain blocked the upward stream. Wei Hua, who was holding a huge chain, slowly descended. From time to time, deafening sounds of cows could be heard from the bottom of the well. Rumor had it that a dragon's roar was similar to a bull's roar. It was possible that a demonic dragon was indeed locked in the dragon lock well. It was not that Wei Hua did not believe it. He felt that a legendary level naga could be locked in the well. It had a domain, it could stir up storms, and legendary creatures could live for thousands of years there. It was possible that the dragon was still alive. However, Wei Hua looked at the chain in his hand. Could this chain really lock down legendary level creatures? Perhaps the dragon lock well was really an outlet into the sea. There was a stopper at the end of the chain. Wei Hua kept falling. He felt that his falling speed was too slow, so he released his domain and used his domain force to go down. The well water kept surging upward. The deeper he went, the stronger it became. It was not until Wei Huo arrived at the bottom of the well that he saw a huge hole. The well water emerged from the hole. The cave entrance was pitch black. A terrifying sound could be heard. The end of the dragon lock well seemed to be connected to a pitch black underground ocean. There was a small cave entrance. Wei Hua slowly dived down and arrived at a vast underground space. There was no end to this place. It was dark and confined. It was pitch black, and there was only water around it. Wei Hua felt like he had arrived in a new world. The cave entrance above his head was connected to another space-time. This was land, and there was a new area under his feet. There was no sky or land in that area. There was nothing there except a chain that kept extending downward. Although Wei Hua had arrived at the end of the dragon lock well, he had yet to reach the end of the chain. He continued diving. He did not know what was hidden in the water, nor did he know what kind of existence was in the pitch black water beneath his feet. The chain might really be holding a terrifying beast. It was deep in the water. Wei Hua continued diving. The surrounding waters were much quieter. However, streams of water would flow from time to time. It made one wonder if something had swam past them. Wei Hua's divine sense continued extending but could not reach the bottom. It seemed like there was a black fog peeking out from deep within. However, it was one with the dark vessel and could not be distinguished. Unfortunately, this was just a feeling. It felt like there were terrifying creatures deep in the water, but it did not seem like there were any. After all, Wei Hua did not find any creatures. There seemed to be a red light under the water as well. This red light was like a pair of eyes, and the water flowed around it. It looked as if something was flowing in the water. It seemed like a monster in the deep sea had opened its mouth, waiting for Wei Hua to enter it bit by bit. Sounds came from deep within the water. The noise sounded like a creature's voice. The sounds kept coming, but the sounds at the cave entrance at the bottom of the dragon lock well suddenly turned into a bull's cry or even a dragon's roar. The sounds came from the end of the chain. 
They made one wonder if there was a huge monster at the end of the chain. However, could this chain really bind a monster? After all, the other end of the chain was tied to a stone tablet. What kind of creature could the stone tablet bind? Wei Huo felt that the pressure around him was getting stronger. He had already dived thousands of meters deep. At that moment, the pressure in the water was immense. He could only use his domain to resist the water pressure. The terrifying sound became louder and more rhythmic, as if a creature was snoring. This happened until Wei Hua's feet touched the sand in the water. Wei Hua's domain could extend for hundreds of meters, so he had reached the cliff long ago. On one side of Wei Hua was a huge deep valley, and he had yet to reach the end of the chain. Wei Hua stopped because he finally found a creature deep in the water. It was an extremely weird flat fish. It did not have a fixed body, and it looked more like a fish-shaped rag. As the water flow and the water pressure changed, its body would also change. It did not have eyes or fins. It floated into the distance along with the waves. There were living creatures in the vast waters. However, Wei Hua could not comprehend this. Had the person who had cast the chain come here personally? How had they dived so deep? Wei Hua continued diving into the deep valley as terrifying sounds kept coming from the valley. Not long after diving, Wei Hua saw the end of the chain. It was not at the bottom of the valley, but on a protruding cliff. There was a huge nail made of special metal there. The end of the chain was tied to the top of the nail. Wei Hua arrived in front of the gigantic nail and saw the three words, Dragon Suppressing Divine Nail, on it. It was the third Dragon Suppressing Divine Nail. In other words, there were at least a first and a second one. It was unknown what material the nail was made of. It had been nailed to the cliff for thousands of years and tied up by a chain. Wei Hua stroked the divine nail and felt that it was filled with energy. He suddenly understood that the divine nail was immortal and the chains couldn't be broken just because of this energy. It was just like bronze that was filled with inner qi and was extremely hard to break. Bronze without inner qi was no different from normal bronze. Wei Hua realized that this energy was dragon qi. The iron nail was suppressing a dragon vein. Terrifying sounds kept coming from deep within the water, but Wei Hua did not care anymore. He finally knew what was locked in the dragon lock well. He finally understood why there were so many dragon lock wells all over the country. This was an ancient feng shui mighty figure. He traveled around and used this method to suppress the dragon vein in the country. He wanted the dragon chi in the dragon vein to nourish the country's territory and make it prosper forever. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 169, The Old Monk Left Wei Hua closed his eyes and stroked the divine nail carefully. Gradually, Wei Hua felt an extremely powerful energy. At the same time, he felt the direction of the energy flowing. The huge energy flowed from the west to the east like a vast river. The divine nail seemed to have dug a hole in the river, and the water would flow out of the hole and nourish the earth. The effect of the dragon chi was extraordinary. If someone were to cultivate there, the results would be doubled. However, it was not useful to Wei Hua. The dragon chi nourished everything and represented the power of life. Wei Hua walked the path of nirvanic extermination, which represented the power of death. That was why the dragon chi was useless to Wei Hua. That was why things were different. However, the dragon chi was still very useful. Wei Hua planned to return after he successfully obtained the Rui Pagoda and collected some dragon chi. It would definitely be useful. Wei Hua looked at the divine nail and said that he would come back again. He could explore the depths of the canyon and find out where the weird sound came from. However, it was time for him to return. Wei Hua followed the chain up and soon returned to the dragon lock well. After entering the cave, he started pulling the chain down. The chain blocked the hole when it was pulled down. The well water stopped surging up. Wei Hua lowered the chain to the bottom of the well and blocked the hole before swimming up. When he swam out of the water, he saw an intact Buddha tower and some wet ground. Wei Hua walked out of the Buddha tower and realized that the sky was clear. 
He immediately understood that because he had pulled the chain, the dragon chi had rushed into the sky and formed a rain of dragon chi. As the rain fell, it nourished the ground and brought life to all living creatures. Wei Huo returned to the temple. The ground was moist, and there were puddles everywhere. The eaves of the temple were dripping with water, and loud roars were coming from the temple. Wei Huo walked over and saw the old monk practicing a fist move. However, the fist technique he practiced this time was unusual. It was fast, strong, and murderous. The old monk's gaze was sharp, and every punch carried boundless killing intent. It was as if he was not a dignified and benevolent monk, but a murderous general. Wei Hua stood there and watched for a while before a system notification popped up. You have learned the eight extremes fist, incomplete. It was the eight extremes fist. It was no wonder it was so ferocious. Judging by the old monk's appearance, he was already very familiar with this fist technique. He had even condensed his own fist intent. Wei Hua saw a murderous aura surrounding the old monk and forming a circle. He frowned. He was familiar with this scene. It was obviously a false imposing aura, a murderous aura. Who was this old monk? The old monk threw a punch and a murderous aura spread out, blowing the leaves of the dragon head tree. The old monk was already a half-step epic being. After finishing his punching routine, he gradually stopped. At that moment, Wei Huo walked in. Master, something seems off today. The old monk took a deep breath and said, the world seems to have changed. Wei Hua asked, Master, did you go down the mountain? The old monk shook his head. I didn't go down the mountain, but water gushed out of the well. It flowed down a small mountain and covered the ground. No one went up the mountain to check it out. Something huge must have happened outside. Upon seeing that the old monk had packed his luggage, Wei Hua asked, Are you leaving, master? The old monk nodded. I want to go back to my hometown to take a look. After leaving home for so long, one should return to their roots. It's time to go back. Wei Hua asked, Master, who are you? The old monk sighed. You triggered a huge phenomenon in the dragon lock well, yet you're still alive. It seems like you're not an ordinary person. I'll tell you the truth. Actually, I'm a wanted criminal. Wei Huo was not surprised. He had already expected this. The old monk was covered in tattoos and emitted a murderous aura when he practiced his fist moves. He had to be from the underworld. The reason he had become a monk was probably to avoid his enemies or the police. The old monk looked into the distance. I left my house when I was very young. At the time, I followed a circus and traveled all over the world. I practiced all my skills, but I never fought with anyone. I earned a little money for seven to eight years in the outside world and planned to go home. However, my whole family was killed, and the murderer was out of control. In a fit of anger, I killed seven people and nearly died. I was saved and I became the bodyguard of the big boss of the underworld. Five years later, the big boss was killed. I escaped and came here. I was saved by the old master in the temple and I became a monk and stayed one until today. The old monk's tone was calm. He did not seem to have gone through any ups and downs. He had experienced two of the most dangerous disasters in his life, but he had also been lucky enough to learn fist techniques. He had been through multiple life and death battles to train his willpower. However, due to his strong luck, he had only escaped in the end. Perhaps he was not fated to die, as he had been saved by the old monk in the temple and had become a young monk. Time had flown by, and the old monk had died. He had then become the new old monk. The old monk smiled and told Wei Hua, to be honest, I thought you were a young plainclothed police officer who came to investigate. However, I saw the vicissitudes of time and coldness in your eyes, as well as mountains of corpses and seas of blood. Then, I guessed that the world might have really changed. It was only when you caused such a huge commotion in the Dragon Lock well and no relevant departments came to investigate that I was sure that the world had really changed. Wei Hua did not speak. He knew that the old monk had wanted to leave the mountain but had not dared to. He was wanted, and his enemies were chasing him everywhere. He'd had no choice. 
The old monk sank into his memories. I still remember the stone river I walked in barefooted, I remember the loach I caught in the muddy pond, I remember digging out someone's fields to find crabs. Time flew by, and my old friends passed away. Perhaps no one in this world remembers me anymore, but I will still return to my roots. I want to see if the people I care about are still alive. I want to see if my enemy is dead. Only then will I feel regret and embark on a journey down the final path. Wei Huo could feel the old monk's willpower. He was about to step into the epic stage, but he was not sure if he would succeed. That was why he wanted to return to his hometown, but he had regrets. He wanted to sever everything that had happened in the past so that he could embark on the final path. In the end, the old monk, who had claimed that he would remain the same no matter what happened outside, left the temple to Wei Hua. However, Wei Hua eventually left the temple. The next morning, a group of deer ran to the top of the mountain and surrounded the bell tower. They looked around as if they were searching for the kind old man who fed them fruit every morning. However, now that the old man had left, no one would come to feed them anymore. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 170, The Immortal Tomb Wei Hua had to cultivate the mystic Yin Ai soul skill and take the Rui Pagoda from the tower. He also had to collect Dragon Qi from the Rui Pagoda. Apart from that, he had asked the Nagas to send people to mine bronze ores. He also had to refine the bronze cauldron into his own magical equipment and thoroughly understand the human slaughtering array. He could also understand theories and practice and control them flexibly. He had too many things to do and did not have time to stay on the mountain. Besides, the great ancestor palace of the Naga's great ancestor was an excellent cultivation ground. The hall had been set up by a master of the Naga race who knew about feng shui. It would be easier to cultivate there. During his second month in that place, Wei Hua finished his tower charge. He was still stuck at level 59. He had only obtained one level bead. As expected, the reward decreased greatly the second time. He challenged level 60 this time, but the five late-stage legendary level creatures were too powerful. The five metal, wood, water, fire, and earth elementals formed a five-element array. Wei Hua was no match for them. He could only leave and increase his strength before challenging them. However, during the second month, the Naga's mining team dug out something unusual. A bronze lotus hidden deep under the ground was knocked out by a Naga's pickaxe. The bronze lotus contained inner chi and was so hard that it directly shattered the pickaxe. This was only the beginning. Soon, the Naga dug out a bronze gate. There were lotus flowers, lotus leaves, and lotus branches carved on the gate. The lotus flowers were lifelike and lush. The bronze gate was filled with inner chi. The Naga could not open it easily, so they came to ask Wei Hua about it. Before Wei Hua could say anything, rumors started spreading among the Naga. This is the grave of an immortal. Wei Hua found Master Feng Shui. Master Feng Shui was already very old. He had lost his sight, so he was a blind old man. It was said that he had been searching for a dragon for too long and had been punished for it. Are we talking about a huge tomb? Wei Hua asked. The blind old man was very certain. Based on what I can tell. Based on what heaven can tell, this is definitely a huge tomb. It's an immortal tomb. Wei Hua was speechless. Aren't you blind? Wei Hua asked, an immortal tomb? What kind of immortal is buried here? The blind old man carefully touched the tomb's door and said, according to the carvings on the tomb's door, there are many lotus flowers. It's obvious that this is He Xiangu's tomb, the lotus immortal, of course, could be the lotus leaf immortal or the lotus root immortal. A miner asked, maybe the tomb owner liked lotus flowers? The blind old man snorted. What do you know? This is an immortal tomb. It's used to bury immortals. If someone is buried here, their descendants will definitely die a horrible death. The blind old man treated Wei Hua with respect. Your Majesty. Please open the gate of the tomb. The immortal tomb will not appear in the world unless a super expert is around to suppress the luck, disrupt the magnetic field, and expose the immortal tomb. 
Otherwise, even if the gate of the immortal tomb is placed in front of ordinary people, they will subconsciously ignore it. The Naga treated Wei Hua as a king and a servant. They had been subdued by Wei Hua's power and had willingly become his slaves. Wei Hua arrived in front of the bronze gate. The gate contained a domain power. Normal people would not be able to open it. Only legendary level Wei Hua could wipe away the domain power. It would take at least two months. Of course, ten days would be enough if he only destroyed the gate. However, the blind old man did not suggest that. Wang. The immortal tomb is not simple. It's a legendary level tomb. There might be heaven-shaking divine medicine and heaven-defying magical equipment inside. If you destroy the gate by force, you might destroy the treasures inside. Wei Hua nodded. Two months was not considered a long time. Besides, coming into contact with other people's domains was a very good cultivation method. He could draw insights from others to improve himself by studying other people's domains and verify his domain. Wei Hua arrived in front of the bronze gate. He placed his hand on the bronze gate and felt an ice-cold aura. He found this aura familiar. It was similar to the aura of the mystic Yin Ice Soul skill. This domain was the mystic ice domain. It could thus freeze souls. Soon, Wei Hua connected everything he had experienced over the past few days. The Dragon Lock Well, the Dragon Vein, the Dragon Chi, the Mystic Yin Ice Soul Skill, the Immortal Tomb, and the Mystic Ice Domain. A powerful being had chosen to be buried here after death. They had not even died. Instead, they had used their Mystic Ice Domain to freeze themselves and nourish their body with the Dragon Chi. Wei Hua turned around and asked the blind old man, are living immortals or dead immortals buried in the immortal tomb? The blind old man was stunned. However, he did not dare not answer Wei Hua's question. The existence of immortals is just a theory. It refers to powerful living creatures. Legendary creatures change their appearance endlessly. They can move mountains and fill seas. In our eyes, they are no different from immortals. This so-called graveyard is a tomb of legendary creatures. Wei Hua frowned. He felt that this matter was not as simple as it seemed. The mystic Yin Ice Soul skill could freeze one's soul. If this person had frozen themselves in this tomb, the person who had dug the tomb would have alerted the person in the tomb and awakened them. At that thought, Wei Hua said, wait for me to slowly neutralize the domain power inside the gate. Don't alert the existence inside. Upon hearing Wei Hua's words, the blind old man thought of something and exclaimed, are you saying that this legendary creature is still alive? That's impossible. Even a peak legendary creature can only live for up to 7,000 years. Wei Hua's eyes narrowed. How do you know? The blind old man did not dare hide this. When the Naga race was at its peak, a legendary level expert appeared. He had a lifespan of 7,000 years. That expert swept across the world and dominated it. Creatures from other races could not compete with us. Unfortunately, no matter how powerful an existence is, there will come a day when their lifespan ends. No matter how powerful a race is, it will die. Now, we don't even know where that expert's tomb is. Wei Hua frowned. Was this the real history of the Naga, or was it just a story setting? Could the Naga race have forged an extremely glorious history in ancient times? When he'd thought about his father crossing the void, they had mentioned the path of sages. Could the ancients have been strong enough to cross the void and travel across the universe to the distant cosmos? However, these were all conjectures. No one knew what the future held. Rather than making wild guesses, it would be better to become stronger first. Wei Hua said, I will definitely enter the immortal tomb. Blind old man, prepare yourself. Come with me. The blind old man was extremely excited. I will have no regrets if I die to enter the immortal tomb. The blind old man did not say that traveling with a legendary level expert gave one a higher survival rate. If he did not enter now, when would he enter? It would only take two months. Wei Huo went into seclusion. He told the blind old man that he had to wait for five years. He had to go into seclusion to improve his strength. 
He had to go through the pagoda and master the mystic Yin Ice Soul skill before entering the tomb. His intuition told him that the tomb was not simple. If he went in, he might die. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.